Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com and we are back again talking about the body and body optimization. The topic for this video is seven, seven uh, simple tactics to keep you in good shape, to keep you healthy. The first thing to understand is that uh, staying in good shape is a battle. Uh, think about the movie Avatar, right? When they arrive on this planet, this um, GI guy, this... Uh, warrior comes to them and says everything out there is trying to kill you okay so unfortunately that's the kind of world we live in it's due to the fact that the food that is offered to us and the environments that are created for us are not necessarily there to keep us in good shape there is all this air pollution in cities the lack of regulations you arrive in a supermarket probably 80 to 90 percent of the food out there in those supermarkets will have some form of toxins you know all the soft drinks are bad for you most of the fat fast food is bad for you most of the packaged food processed food is bad for you because of the things that are being added to them too much sugar too much additive aspartame you know toxins and so you need to be really smart uh if you want to survive and live long and healthy and happy look at it a little bit like a being in the battle zone, when I arrive in the supermarket, my mind is super focused on what's good for me. I don't just arrive there, oh yeah, ooh, that sounds interesting, mayonnaise. What? Get, ah, we need to focus, okay? We need to be smart and stick with each other like a, you know, a powerful tribe of warriors that we want to be. And realize that, you know, this is humankind. This is the way we function and there are ways to, to play with it and navigate and have fun with it. But you need to be smart. So the reason why I'm focusing on these mindsets is because your head and the choices that you make inside of you, the decisions, the intentions, will radically change how you live your life. Your mind needs to be your best ally. So the choice that you make inside of you don't smoke, don't drink. You arrive in an airport, what you see, you know, temptation to buy alcohol and cigarettes. Give me a... Draws me nuts to see that because, you know, it shows that uh, the companies who are creating that don't give up. Okay? They don't care about whether you die tomorrow or not. All they want is to make money with you. Okay? And this is the case for most fast food companies are there there's no intention of making you healthy with that stuff so shift your mind and go to battle mode you need to be smart get information about all that and learn more and establish in your mind mindsets patterns behaviors that are going to protect you on the long term so those mindsets have nothing to do with what i just said they are just you know training and approaches and tactics that will keep you focused and this is very important so as you can see probably my handwriting is totally unreadable to you I'll try to do better next time in the next video but I'm going to tell you about these different points the first one 80% fun 20% discipline it's really a very simple one so Here's what happens. Very often, you have been out of the gym and you go, like, yeah, I want to train. And you start training really, really hard, like for the first week. You go for one hour or two hours every day to the gym and you go, yeah, it's doing great. Within, an, within a week to two weeks, bang, you start feeling some pain in your shoulder. You say, oh, fuck, there's something going on there. And then your back starts hurting. This is called overtraining, doing it too much, too fast, too far. It's like, ah, uh, you have to slow down in the beginning, take small steps, and it needs to be fun. It needs to be affordable on the long term without major effort. The idea of fun and the idea of flow and doing things that feel natural to you is very important because if you want to sustain a practice on the long term, you must be able to do that without major effort, without needing to invest massive willpower. You know, years ago I started training, right? Power building. So I was in the snows of Hungary there with big locks of wood. You know, every, every day I was sometimes training my core, sometimes training my upper top arms. And, but, you know, within three months I was like building up muscle. I was, yeah, that feels really good. And guess what? It's not sustainable for me because 
it required too much willpower and effort. So I started focusing on approaches which are softer and that's way easier. If you are really into power building, okay, it depends on your personality, it depends on your choices and what makes you feel really good. If you are into that, that's, that's perfect, that's great. But if you want to sustain it on the long term, think about tactics that you can use and that make you feel really, really good. If it's just based on willpower and um, you know lots of uh, lots of intensity and lots of discipline, then very often you will be able to sustain it maybe for one to three months, and then after that you start falling and finding excuses not to do it. So fun and flow. Second point here: simple targets. In the beginning, don't go for something which is complex. It doesn't mean that you have to. Uh, when you start training again, you start activating your body again, just go for something which is very simple. Just put your jogging shoes and do around, go around the block. It doesn't have to be training for a marathon or doing something extra or becoming a yoga teacher straight away. Just do things that are simple and very often simple means short. It means that you start the first week or the first month, you start with like, what, 15 minutes a day. Or five minutes if you can do 50, 50 minutes. Why 15 minutes? Because sometimes your life is busy. You simply don't have the time and you go like, oh, because I cannot jog for an hour, I'm not going to do it. Make mistake, okay? Go for simple. What is there? What is right there? If you have five minutes to do some push-ups before you take off to work, just do that. Don't, don't give yourself an excuse not to do it because you don't have a whole hour to do it because you don't have time to put your jogging shoes. Uh, run down the stairs. Take your bike to go to work, jump in the sea, you know, there are lots of options there. But go for something which is really simple, affordable on the long term. Third element, variation. Um, your mind tends to get a little bit bored sometimes when you keep repeating the same thing over and over again without changing. So adding some variation to your training is another aspect which is really important. Uh, for instance, one day you might not feel like doing yoga, so put some music and dance. And uh, sometimes you might not feel like training in the morning, so go for a jog in the afternoon. And sometimes you might not uh, feel like, uh, like doing something soft, but doing some power training. So go to the gym and do some power, you know, weightlifting. It's all good as long as, as, long as you do something. Um, for fourth point is connect. Surround yourself with people who are on the same path. Uh, you want to get in good shape. It will be very, very hard if all the people you have in your circle are all people who are not interested in health, overweight, you know, not eating healthy. It's, you know, the chance of you being out of shape if you are in a tribe of people who are out of shape is 80%. It's like surround yourself with people who are on the same on the same path doesn't mean being discriminative okay i'm not saying that we care for everybody we want everybody to be happy but basically it's like there is a certain resonance that you establish in your life when you suddenly you are so surrounded and bombarded by by people who are on the on the, on the same path so um yeah that's an important one as well um watch your food if you overeat one evening you'll notice that the following day you have much less energy. If you eat one hour before training, your training uh, performance will be very, very low because most of your energy is going into digestive mode. So, you know, watch your food. It's very important to be in a place where um, you are aware of these uh, dynamics. Uh, point number six is daily rhythm. Personally, I like to activate my body in the morning and do another training later in the afternoon. But when I activate in the morning, it's not at 10 o'clock in the middle of the day when I'm being productive. You know, right now it's about uh, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm recording videos, I'm broadcasting, I'm active. I'm not uh, physically pumping up my body. I do that six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, more or less in that, in that range, and then I start being productive. So if you're a professional, you know, if you have all the time of your life, that's fine. You can do that whenever you want, but most of us have some form of daily rhythm where we are producing something. So if you have to go to work at uh, eight o'clock, you don't, you don't have time to go to the gym at 10, right? So you have to find a daily rhythm which is natural. And sometimes you, you only have five minutes in the morning. You only have 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because you have to wake up really, really early. And uh, so um, identifying this ideal daily uh, training routine is an important point as well. Um, the last point, number seven, is rest. 
this is this is important is that you have a natural rhythm where you are going to uh, build a power train your muscles and so on and then uh, uh, two days a week, what I do, Saturday and Sunday, I let go of the discipline. It doesn't mean that I'm not moving my body. I might go, uh, you know, doing some dance or some yoga, but it's soft approach. It's not discipline based. I do it if it feels natural and if I don't have to put any willpower into it. So Saturday and Sunday, you relax, you chill, you spend time with your kids or with your family or with friends. And then uh, on Monday, you get back to uh, to some form of discipline and, and, and rhythm. And uh, those are, you know, I would say that it took me a, it took me a while to identify these seven simple tactics. But those mindsets can really save you and save you from making um, important mistakes in your in the way you approach your your training. This is fun stuff, okay? <laughs> I uh, getting back in shape is like something that can give you so much fresh juice in your life. I encourage you to look at your body as your temple, as your greatest asset. It's time to take back control if you haven't until now and if you're already in good shape. Congratulations. <laughs> Stay focused. See you soon again. Bye-bye.